Welcome to our class Neat Biology and today let us discuss the glandular epithelium. Now coming to this glandular epithelium, it is a special type of epithelium which make up the glands in our body. They may exist single or in groups. And the major role of this gland is to secrete either any enzyme or hormones or fat or simply mucus. Its secretions are required by the other tissue. Now here you can see how the epithelial tissue are being responsible for formation of glands. So here some of the epithelial tissue develop as a cord of epithelial cells on the surface of the membrane. And they undergo invagination and they are being dividing continuously to form a gland. Now it forms the two regions of the cell that is the proximal part as well as the distal part. Okay, now in the uh, secretions later on in the what type of gland it is being uh, going to be the fate. This uh, proximal uh, part may be present to out uh, or the proximal part may be disappeared. Now let us see in further in which cases the proximal part is present and in which places it is being disappeared. Coming to the glandular classification, we have divided the glands into many types depending upon the presence and absence of ducts. If the ducts are being present, it is called as exocrine, ductless glands are endocrine glands. And these secretions which are released by endocrine glands are called as hormones where the secretions are directly mixed up by the blood. There are no ducts to carry the secretions from glands. And the next is number of secretory cells. Okay and here we can classify them into two types. It may be unicellular or multicellular. Unicellular means single cell is responsible for secretion. Example for that is goblet cell which secrete mucus. Multicellular cells or multicellular are responsible for their secretions. Example for that is the exocrine or it may be the endocrine. Exocrine it includes the sebaceous glands or it may be the mammary glands. Endocrine it includes different glands like thyroid gland. And coming to the nature of secretion as well as the mode of secretion, how the cells are being releasing their secretions into the ducts or into blood. Shape of secretory units are the basis for classification of these glands. Now coming to the classification depending upon the number, it is classified into two types. They are the unicellular and multicellular. In unicellular, the single cell is sufficient to reduce or to produce its secretions that is the goblet cells which secrete mucus. And coming to the endocrine glands, the group of cells are being associated together to form a gland and that gland is supposed to give their secretions either into the duct or they may be carried by the blood. And the next classification we have said is depending upon the type of glands, how the secretions are being carried either by the duct or ductless. If they are not carried by ducts, no duct system is present means then those glands are called as endocrine glands. Now here in the earlier session I told you some of the epithelial cells are being invaginated to form a cord like structure. And later on, it is divided into two regions, the proximal part as well as the distal part. Now here, the proximal part cells are disappeared. Only the distal part, there it is being forming the gland and that is pouring their secretions into the capillaries, underlying capillaries which are surrounding those cells. Okay, such a type of glands are called as endocrine glands. In the endocrine glands, the proximal part usually disappear and these distal cells are responsible for formation of gland and they release their secretions into blood capillary. Usually those secretions are called as hormones. Okay, they are multicellular with exception that is paracrine glands.
now coming to the other type of gland that is exocrine gland here the secretions are carried by the ducts so here the proximal part cells which are being dividing are not disappeared and they are responsible for the formation of duct in the endocrine gland this proximal part is being disappeared but in exocrine this is supposed to form a duct okay and now here there are different types of exocrine gland okay the ceruminous gland which is present in the ear are responsible for secretion of ear wax okay as well as the salivary glands which produce the saliva the digestive glands which produce the enzymes all of them are the exocrine because the secretions are being carried by the ducts and these exocrine secretions may be multicellular or unicellular so here this is the uh, distinction between the presence and absence of ducts here the duct is present where the cells pour their secretions into the duct and this duct carry these secretions out or to the target region but here the cells are present here the uh, uh, secretions are transferred directly into the blood and now the blood is carrying uh, this secretion to the target site that is the difference between exocrine gland and endocrine gland now coming to the different types of exocrine secretions there are three types of exocrine secretions like mirocrine gland epocrine as well as a holocrine now what exactly is the difference between this means in mirocrine the, the cell retain their shape there is no change in their shape but they pour their secretions into the duct and this duct carry the secretions outside this is usually found in sweat glands now coming to the next type that is epocrine here the cell is changing its structure that is the epical part is being pinched off okay along with the secretions so that type of secretion is called as epocrine some part of this cell is being pinched off along with the secretions okay so the best example for this is epo uh, epocrine is mammary glands and then last type is a holocrine here the entire cell or the dying cell is disintegrating from its uh, from its place to release out the secretion along with the secretions this dead cells are also or the cell is disintegrated from its place so these cells who disintegrate from those place are the dead cell so example for that is sebaceous gland okay along with this the dead cells also come out with the secretion so these are the different types of exocrine glands which are present in our body